Welcome to the Genius Solutions Auto Post Improvements in version 9.5 in eThomas video. This video will detail claim adjustment reason codes on the 835 payment report, modifications to the auto post screen, good claims and exceptions, new items on the auto post list screen, auto post exceptions, and non-covered services to go on the exceptions. Okay, before we begin, if you have not used the auto post feature or would like training on this feature, Genius Solutions holds routine webinars on the topic. Please visit our website at www.geniussolutions.com, select your specialty, and click on events for a list of all events and upcoming webinars. You may also call us at 586-751-9080 and press 5 for administration. Now we will discuss the improvements to the 835 reports. The 835 reports printed out of EDI Client will now include the Claim Adjustment Reason Codes or CARCs for each line of service. From within EDI Client, print your reports like you normally do to load them into eThomas. Okay, so I'm going to print out a few of the insurance payment reports to illustrate the claim adjustment reason codes on each line. So as you can see on this 835 report, we have underneath this line of service the PR3, the CO45, and the same with the next line of service. And if we go to the next page, it's the same, the same thing where we have the reason, claim adjustment reason codes. And as you can see, the same thing on this um, page of the 835. When we close out of the 835, the last page of the report will contain an adjustment summary. And this is how the report has always printed with the adjustment summary. The new additions are the claim adjustment reason codes listed for each line of service. Once you have updated to version 9.5 and after you have loaded your checks into AutoPost, you will notice that the AutoPost screen has been modified. Please keep in mind that only those checks loaded into eThomas after you have updated to version 9.5 will have the new features that I'm going to go over. You may delete the current checks out of your system, out of eThomas, and reload them in order to use the new features. But only those checks that have been loaded after the update will contain the new features we're going to go over. One of the first things you'll notice in the auto post screen is there is an addition of the exceptions button. When click a list of all the auto post exceptions within the auto post exceptions area will print to the screen. If there are no exceptions to print, a message will display that says there are no exceptions to print, which is the case here because I have no exceptions yet. I have not loaded any checks. Once you've selected a check to load, I'm going to select this one, you will notice that the auto post item screen has changed quite a bit. So we're going to select this and we're going to click the load checks button. Once the check has loaded, you'll be brought to the auto post items. This screen has been modified. You'll notice you have a post button, an R, a good claims, and an exceptions. When the items from the checks load, items will be placed in either a good claims or exceptions category. Good claims are those items from the 835 report that are eligible for auto post. You will see when you are on good claims that the screen says ready to post. If I was on the exceptions, the screen would say exceptions. In this case, there are no exceptions. There are only good claims. We'll get to the exceptions portion later on in the video. 
Other new items on the good claims include the claim number for ease of reference to the patient claim. We also have a withheld column, which will display any amounts considered withholds loaded from the 835 report. And if we scroll over to the right, we're going to see another column called OFC, which stands for Other Financial Code. And this will display the secondary or tertiary policy, whichever one is next in line on the claim, if it's present during the claim at the time the check was loaded. So in this case, I have policy one of two. So the first policy is the one being posted to, but this patient has two policies. The next policy in line is a financial code of BC, which is more than likely Blue Cross. And then next to OFC, you're going to see a REAS CDS, which is your reason codes. And if you can't see all of this, you can drag the columns. Your reason codes are going to show the claim adjustment reason codes, which are loaded in from the 835. You'll see the codes here, and if there's more than one, it will be separated with a slash. And then if I wanted to post these items, or in this case, this item, I would click the post button. If I want to print a report of the items on the screen, I would click the R button to generate a report. I'm gonna go ahead and post this item. And then it will bring us back to the auto post screen. Now the first check that we auto posted did not have any exceptions on it. Now we'll do a check that does have exceptions on it. So we'll just do the next one here on the bottom and we're going to click on load checks. Once we load the checks, it brings us to the auto post items, brings us to the good claims. Now for this particular check, there are no good claims. There are only exceptions. So exceptions are those items which will not auto post. They will have to be manually posted. So right now I'm on the good claims, ready to post, there's nothing listed. So I'll click on exceptions and I can see these are the items that will not auto post. Within the exceptions will be displayed those items which will not auto post. The list will include the patient name, the patient type, if it's present in between the asterisks, the claim number, the financial code, the date of service, the procedure code, the claim adjustment reason code or CARC, a detailed memo with a pop-up dialog box detailing the description of the claim adjustment reason code, and if you hover over the detail, the dialog box will pop up. And then we have the message, which is a modified version of the memo. Additionally, from within the exceptions, you may print a report of the auto post exceptions details. So everything listed on the exceptions screen will print out on that report. You may also double click on a patient, on a line item, and it will bring you into the claim information. From the claim information screen, I may post an insurance payment if desired from underneath whatever policy the insurance payment is coming from. I can also just view the claim if needed and post later. So I'm going to just close out of the claim information and post these auto post exceptions. By clicking on post, it will post any items that are in the good claims or the exceptions for this check. In this case, I only have exceptions. I have no good claims on this check. So it will um, post them and put them in the auto post exceptions area, which we'll be going over here shortly. And once I've posted, it will bring me back to the auto post screen. Now we're going to discuss the auto post exceptions link. It is a new link underneath the billing tab all the way at the bottom called auto post exceptions. 
I'm going to click on the auto post exceptions and that will bring me into all the exceptions that I've posted throughout the system through the auto post area. Now I just um, just a few moments ago posted some auto post exceptions from a check and they appear here. Now we're going to go over all the different features within auto post exceptions. So the items contained within the auto post exceptions are those items that were posted through auto post that were categorized under exceptions. So these are items that were not auto post auto posted. These are items that will have to be manually posted. You may click on the R to run a report and that will generate an auto post exceptions report of all the items listed within the auto post exceptions. You may also use the pencil to edit. So if you highlight an item and click on the pencil, this will bring up the auto post exceptions edit. From within the auto post exceptions edit screen, I may edit the detail if desired. I can add more notes in there. These are the notes from the memo from the claim adjustment reason code. So this is telling me why this claim was rejected or not paid. From here, I can edit the claim. So if I click on edit claim, it brings me right into the claim information. Now let's close out of here for a moment. If desired, really neat thing you can do here is you can copy the detail. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to click on edit claim again. And then from within the claim information, if I want to store inside the claim note as to why that claim was not paid or why it was rejected, I can click on the claim note and I can paste that information right here and save it. And then I will keep a um, running history on that claim. In addition, um, from within the claim information, if I need to manually post this or maybe I need to send it back to the payer, maybe I need to contact the insurance company for whatever reason why it wasn't paid, I can go ahead and um, put the status to whatever it needs to be post um, a payment or a non-payment if need be. In this case, I'm just going to exit out. And if I wanted to delete this exception, I could click the delete button here. Um, in this case, I probably am not going to want to delete it because I want to keep it as a reminder that I need to do something with this. So for this one, I'm just going to close out of the auto post exception edit and I'm going to grab the next one in line here and I'm going to click on edit because I want to copy the detail and I'm going to click on edit claim since I'm right inside the auto post exception edit and this is Medicare. So what I'm going to do in this case is inside my claim note going to indicate Medicare. They're not paying this. And I'm going to go ahead and post my insurance payment. They did not pay anything on the service. So I'm going to let it fall into the copay so I can send it to the secondary insurance. You see the claim status is already set to secondary. I'm going to click on done. That's been posted. I'm going to save this claim. And I'm brought back to the auto post exceptions edit where I'm going to close out. I can delete from here. If I wanted to delete, delete it right from this area, it would remove it from my list. That's always an option, but I'm going to show you a more efficient way to remove um, exception edits from the list. So let's close out. Okay, so we just posted an insurance payment for this patient. 
on the second line, it was actually a non-payment and the claim was put into a secondary status. There's two other buttons to the right here. One's called RMVC, which stands for Remove Complete. And the other is RMVURST, which stands for Remove Unbuild, Rebuild, Secondary, and Tertiary. So I'm going to use this button called Remove URST and what it's going to do is it will go through my list of auto post exceptions and remove any one on the list where the claim is in an unbuild, rebuild, secondary, or tertiary status. Now because I just posted a non-payment for the second patient and the claim was put into a secondary status, this line item will be removed from my list. So let's click. It's going to prompt me, are you sure you want to remove exception messages relating to, and it lists the different statuses. I'm going to say yes. Then as you can see, it removed that item. This is a really easy way to clean up and maintain your auto post exceptions list using the remove URST or remove C, which is complete. We'll go through another one here. So on this patient here, um, I can click on edit, click on the pencil, um, because what I want to do is copy my detail. Now you don't have to copy the detail. Um, you, you may just go in um, and post an insurance payment either from here or from the patient screen. I'm, I'm going to be working right from, the, right from the auto post exceptions. So I'm going to highlight this, copy, and I'm going to click on edit claim. Now this is a payment from my um, secondary insurance, actually a non-payment. My primary already paid, so inside my claim note, I'm going to add my note as to why it wasn't paid. It was uh, the coverage has been terminated. I'm going to save, and then I'm going to click on post, and I'm going to move everything over to the copay in this case and it should be $20 because that's what my insurance payment is. And um, in this case, I want to probably put some type of message in here that the coverage was terminated. If I have a transfer reason that it was terminated, I can um, grab it here. Not sure if I do. Let me see, coverage terminated. Also, I'll do no active coverage as my transfer reason. Now, when I post this, it's going to ask me, do I want to set the claim status to complete? I'm going to say yes. And my claim is incomplete. I have no balance. I'm going to save this. And again, I can delete the auto post exception edit right from here. But I'm looking for efficiency here, what's going to be easiest. So when I'm all done working all of my exceptions on the list, which I'm going to do this other one for the same patient, then I'll remove my complete claims. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next patient here, which actually it's the same patient, um, just on a separate line of service. And if I double click on the claim, I can see here that, okay, the claim, um, this is the same claim, so it's in a complete status. So there were two lines of service on that claim. And you see how I did that? You can access the claim either through clicking on the line item, clicking on the pencil to edit, and going to edit claim. You may also double click on the line item to be brought right into the claim information, whichever is easiest for you. I find that clicking on the pencil to edit is easier just because I can copy the detail message. Now, if you don't want to bother with that, you don't want the detail message to copy that into the claim or you don't want to view it, by all means, just double click on the line item to get into the claim. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this RMVC, which is going to remove all completed items from this list. Now it should remove 
both of these items on the bottom because it's um, that claim has been put into a complete status. So I'm going to do RMVC. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to remove exception messages relating to completed claims? I'll say yes. And then I'm left with two items to work with. Just a few other items I want to show you before we leave the auto post exceptions is within, within the auto post exceptions will be listed the patient and any of these columns can be expanded if you just click and drag them over. It'll also show the patient type if there is one in between the asterisks. You have your claim number, the financial code, date of service, procedure code, the claim adjustment reason code or CARC code. You also have your detail memo which just like in the other screen if you hover your mouse over it it will pop up a dialog box and then you have your message. So any item that has a capital M are those items that were loaded into your system from the 835 report after you've updated to 9.5, it will load that detail message. You may see lowercase m's, which do not have a detail memo. And those are going to be either items that were um, loaded into the system prior to updating to 9.5. It may also be items that the system cannot find um, either the patient or the transaction. So the message would say something to the effect of um, can't find transaction, can't find patient. And that's going to be in a lowercase m because there is no detail memo um, because it did not come from the CART code. It just means that eThomas couldn't find the patient or the transaction for whatever reason. Okay, let's talk about non-covered services for a moment. So you see on these two examples here, it says service not approved. These are considered non-covered services. Those are items that do not have an approved amount on the 835 payment voucher. So any service that does not have an approved amount that where a check is loaded into eThomas, those amounts will be placed on the auto post exceptions area of eThomas and then um, you'll have the ability to either manually post those payments through the auto post exceptions um, like you've just seen or you can do it through the patient tab um, like you've always been able to do. Either way, whichever, whichever works out best for you. Um, I happen to like posting it right from the auto post exceptions because you have access to the um, detail as to why the claim or that why that line item was rejected. Um, but however it works out best for your office, um, you can go ahead and post those items. And that's going to wrap it up for the auto post improvements in eThomas version 9.5 video. We really hope that you're going to enjoy all of these improvements that we've made on the auto post area. Um, we've really tried to listen to what our clients have, have suggested um, for improvements on the program and we hope you enjoy. Thank you.